I was gonna say like why not CNN or but what who cares white truth right is it about a future movie or something coming out or no okay it's not about any movie it's not about the movies I've made in the past it's a confession of sorts okay I mean about you cheated on your wife you no. plagiarized I would never do that no. plagiarized something it's about a movie I made that nobody is aware of even though they've seen it Okay. Is that intriguing? Do I have you intrigued? Well, I mean, see if I understand what you said. It's about a movie you made, no one knows you made. Is that what you said? That's right. It's a production. Like, I, I, some of you put, like, uh, you didn't put your name on? Like, at the end, you put, like, a fake name? Oh, no. I I made it. Like Alan Smithy, like that That's right. Thing? No, I didn't. There was no name put on it. Why? Why would there be no credits? What do you mean? Because there are some things that you just can't. Put your name on. Okay. Okay. I perpetrated a huge fraud, which I am now about to detail. Okay. Involving the United States government and NASA. All right. And I'm sure you've heard the rumors. The moon. The moon landing. Hoax? That's right. That the moon landing was fake. The, the moon landing, moon landings, all were fake, and I was the person who filmed it. You're serious, and okay. I'm serious. You're, I'm dead serious. Because I only have this certain amount of time with you, and I and I'll talk about whatever you want. You know, this isn't some type of joke or no, it's not film a, within a film thing. Not a joke. Nope. Okay. The uh, conspiracy theorists were right on this on this occasion. Why? I don't know about Paul McCartney's death, but this they were right about. Okay, why in God's name? Would, I don't know what to ask you first. Why the hell? If you're telling the truth, why would you do it? Why are you telling me? I mean, what? The? Don't you think it's important for people to know the truth? Yeah, I got yes, yeah, certainly. They had a, a, a massive fraud, a, an unparalleled fraud perpetrated against them. They should know. Okay. Um, I mean, I, they're already suspicious of the government. They may as well have their suspicions confirmed. Okay. Um, justified. And this, why now? I mean, we're almost 30 year anniversary. Uh, what, what took so long? Why are you, why, why, if this is true, why? Well, going to that, it has to do with personal. Okay. Uh, uh, evolution and influences. And, well, I'll go into that. Is that why you look a little haggard right now? Because you look a little worn. No offense. Like, well, also, yeah, because I haven't been taking care of myself too well. I've been drinking a lot, but is that because of the stress of this? Of is course, that... stress, guilt, just conflict of all kinds. <sighs> Wow, I mean, so you, you, you feel bad about this, clearly. I mean, this is... Nice. I do feel bad about it. I also feel proud of it. It's a terrible conflict. Because you've pulled off one of the greatest hoaxes ever because of and your... And because I made a film, if you want to call it a film, which I consider to be my masterpiece. And you can't take credit or even talk about it as a... As well, a I'm, here well, by, you are now. I'm hereby taking credit. Right, but you can't actually go out. You're doing it. when people see this, no it'll be you'll be dead this until ten years. Right, 15 or fifteen, years yeah. After my death. So you can't talk to Roger Ebert about it. You know, does that frustrate you? I have to pay the consequences for the decision that I made many years ago to go along with this. Like I deal with the devil. It's Faustian, to be sure. Because, and is that why you got such power in Hollywood? I mean, that would explain that. Why I have the freedom I have, that was part of it, yes. So they, they, they said, do this moon thing and we'll when give I, you... When I made Spartacus, I didn't have this kind of freedom. Right. But I have it now. So what came and first, the NASA, genius or the what fraud? NASA's doing? Well, what came first, the genius or the fraud? I mean, did the fraud enable the genius or was the genius released well, like the fraud? I think the genius came first. Right. But some frauds are hard to bypass, especially if you have an ego and you're an artist. 
and you, you're presented with a challenge, the likes of which you've never seen and will probably never see again. You don't even think of the morality of it. You're just completely swept, swept away by the flattery of it and the juices inside you, which make you want to do it as the, the artist you are innately. You don't think of anything else. What a conflict. I mean, gosh, I can't imagine being presented with that opportunity. On one hand, I really would want to do it, but then I'd probably say, well, I'm committing a crime and lying. And It must- depends, but my guess would be, no, you, you, if you're good, you would do it. I, I discussed this with Levinson, Barry Levinson. Right. I discussed it with... Oh, he made Wag the Dog, right? Yeah. Yes. Spielberg, of all people, believe it or not, yes. So wait, Wag the Dog? Coppola, Scorsese, yeah. even Woody Allen, I discussed. There isn't one of them who wouldn't do this. Right. And did that... So Barry Levinson must have been influenced by this whole... He must have known, so that's... Wag the Dog is about this whole idea. Oh, I mean, that's why... The character was named Stanley. Right. And he gets killed at the end because he demands credit. Tell me about the making of it. So, was it difficult? I mean, (laughs) committing the greatest fraud, uh, what you want to call it. I'm not saying it's a... I know a lot about that. I know. So, I'm not making a moral judgment, but making this huge, ambitious, technical foe landing, was it part of the 2001? Was it very difficult? I mean, what was the experience like? (laughs) Artistically, practically, emotionally, what was Nothing it like? Nothing was for? harder than 2001. So th- 2001 was harder than faking the moon landing? It actually was. Because you learned things on 2001 and... Yes. I mean, it's, 2001 was very ambitious. And that's not to say that faking the moon landing was not ambitious. But, uh, yeah, I learned things making 2001, which is why I got this gig in the first place, right? Right, right, that makes sense. So, so what was the but it, was, it was easy for me because, um, well, first of all, I didn't think a whole lot about the morality of it. As I said, if I had, I might have been uh, more uh, hesitant, more stifled in my work, but I didn't. And I, I could see that, that Neil was, actually. He was bothered by it. More than Buzz Aldrin or anyone else involved? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. About in what? a way, everything was going to center around him. He was the one who was supposed to come down off the ladder and announce the, the step for mankind and what have you. Uh, he sensed that this was going to be a life-changing experience for him. And I mean on a major scale. Uh, actually, he was, uh, he was rather tortured by it the rest of his life. Really? I mean, is that why you think of interviews? Yes. And, and, that's, and, and, and in, in fact, uh, that actually began to affect my own perception of it, watching what what happened to him. Okay, in what way? Just seeing the deterioration of him? And, I mean, was he depressed? or? He was depressed. He was uh, drinking heavily, um, bitter, scared. Uh, just phobic, but uh, avoiding people. Uh, you know, that guy Bart Sabrell or something tried to get him to swear in a Bible. I mean, I mean, what, when I say it affected me, that's why there was so much time in between films for me. Between uh, uh, you, Full Metal yeah. Jacket and well, between uh, uh, The Shining and Full Metal Jacket was about six years. Between Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut is. 13 years, yeah. and a lot of that time was spent just... Like just emotionally processing? Yes, mm-hmm. it, it became very conflicting for me. I was proud of my work, but at the same time, and this was a lot due to, a lot because of Neil's influence, not consciously, he didn't do this to me consciously, but I spent a lot of time with him, and each time I did, I became more and more bothered, troubled by my own participation in this. Okay. Well, what would he say? I mean, what, what was, did he explain the source of his depression? He I mean, was what, on the verge of tears. He did not cry. I won't say he cried, but he was on the verge of tears so many times because of what he did. I mean... What he participated in. It's almost as if he thought up the idea, you know? Right. He and felt he that did, He was almost used, really. Okay. 
But he's the one who felt the guilt. I'm sure NASA did not feel that much guilt. And, I mean, why did he go up, I wonder? I wonder why. Because they promised him a seat and in three years when they figured it out. They kept lying about it being possible. So why do you think he did it? Why did Armstrong do it in the first place? He, he thought, they kept saying, we'll be ready in three years and you'll go then. Just lie now and we'll go in three years. The funding will keep going and we'll we'll figure this out and you'll go. Well, actually, no. Right, yeah. And they, but they were lying, you know, and, and they figured it out. And he got really, you know, so cynical. Got it? So, uh, so why did Armstrong go? I mean, he's been such a moral principled man. If he, why would he go on a fake moon mission? I don't believe that. Well, they strung him along because they led him to believe, oh, don't worry, we're going to have the money in a few years and we'll actually go and then you will go. They'll have, of course. you mean they'll have the technology in a few years? Yes. Okay. They will have enough, they will, yes, they will be able to uh, actually perform the miracle of going to the moon. And yes, he would be in the saddle. So otherwise, okay, let's make this clear. Kennedy set a, a deadline, psychological deadline of the 60s. They knew they couldn't beat it. Right. So they could have beat they did. Right, and if they did, you're saying they sincerely thought that they would really get there within a few years. I believe, yes, they did think so. Because that's what they, well, I mean, that's... Although some didn't. There was a, a difference of opinion. There were some that just believed honestly that we will never be able to get there. There's just no chance. That Werner and I used to like have coffee in the mornings, and he was like, that, you know, there, uh, "There's no fucking way." Like, you know, is it right? like you know, even Werner von Braun. Right, 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 right. So go, if you want that. Some people didn't believe that you could go. Even, well, and... Werner von Braun, of course, did. The, the director didn't think so. The man was just too brilliant. He knew that we couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you... So, okay, I'm talking about a guy working for, on two lost causes, the Nazism and, 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 and you know, the, the, the quest for the moon. I mean, he really, did, and he didn't tell them? I mean, did he ever tell them? Did he tell the NASA? Like, did he tell the president we can't go? I mean, I mean, he must have, he must have been broke the news. Well, he was very old, of course, at the time. And a lot of people just dismissed him. Younger, more ambitious people, some of them really thought we could get there. Right. Or wanted to believe it. Maybe on a conscious level they knew we couldn't, but they just wanted to believe the impossible because they were so full of themselves. And so full of the dream. Yes. The dream the dream was very powerful. And that's what beguiled Armstrong. Here, the noble stand-up guy, and he didn't want to be part of the lie, but he, he knew he'd get a seat if he played ball on when, when they actually did go up. He was too good but, for this. But that day never came, obviously. That day never came. And what did that do to him? I mean... It gradually destroyed him, I think. Okay. He deteriorated. Um, yeah, like I said, he, he, he drank a lot. He was full of self-recrimination. And so was I. Well, mainly from his influence. I, I almost, it's like I, I caught it okay. from him. And I'll tell a story about, uh, I talked to him one last time before his death, and he made me promise to get this news out. It was too great. It was, you know, this one last story. I, I died before his death. Okay. One last conversation that, it, that, that uh, right, the last conversation you had was about three months ago. And he said that, you know, uh, one of, you know, that he, he record, like, he's going to write a letter and, and put it in a drawer and maybe his wife someday will give it out. But he's like, or it's like you, you know, you're a media guy. You got to tell the truth one day, you know, right before but he urged me to tell the truth. You know, he, you know, he couldn't because of reasons that, he, that because he was a government employee his whole life and he had a government pension and here I'm a millionaire. Like, you know, you, you can afford to Stanley tell the truth. You know, I still get a government pension, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's been eating on you to do this. And that's why you're not doing it now. You're doing it 15 years from now you know, or whenever. Like, in other words, you're telling this. That's why you're not announcing on CNN. It's because you're going to honor his wish. But you're not ready for it now to come out. But this is, you're doing this for me. Why am I putting it off? Because I think I'll... Be because you don't want your family... You you want to be dead. Right, right, right. And you don't want your family to have 15 years on it. Your wife will probably be dead and your kid will be grown. Right. You want distance from your legacy from this truth. That's it. Okay. okay. Right, right. So, what happened? Um, so, so, so what? So, so, what really motivated contacting me as a filmmaker was I talked to Neil, and I was I really felt guilty, and that's why I arranged for you to interview me because I wanted to blah blah blah. blah. Let's talk about the motive. 
So, so wait, so, so New really got to you. I mean, it sounds like he's the impetus of this entire confession in a way. I mean, it, it's your, it's like a theme. Like, so he really yeah, made you become me. circumspect uh, about this. He even virtually begged me to um, reveal all this. He couldn't do it himself. He, he has a pension to worry about. Uh, I had basically nothing to lose. I'm, you know, an established filmmaker not involved with the government in any way except for this one job and I, I made my, my millions. I'm, I'm really basically set for life. I'm almost 70. But you still must fear one thing they can do to you, which is, I mean, I don't know, do you ever, I mean, you, they, you obviously, do you ever worry about them killing you because of the secret? I mean, you have become a bit of a recluse. I don't know, the, you know, with the... Yeah, um, Garbo, Howard Hughes, J.D. Salinger, and me. Right. And to some degree, Neil. But did they, I mean, did any of them think that the government was out to get them? And I'm not saying you think that, but do you? I mean, the government obviously no. said they'll kill you. I mean, obviously, the government said we'll kill you if, if you say anything. I mean, that, that's a standard top secret sort of penalty. It's but, understood, even if it's not said. Right. But they did say it to you, I presume. Yeah. They, they they did. I mean, the, yes, the government they, 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 they said basically. So it they was. Tried to be cute about it, but yeah, it was said in no uncertain terms. So why are you? So this won't this can't this get you killed? Well, that's why I'm uh, delaying it. Okay, the fifteen years this thing. It's not going to be seen. Okay, until for another fifteen years 15 after your death. Well, no, that's if you die tomorrow. You're not going to die tomorrow, clearly. I'm sorry. Okay, try again, try again. Yeah, it's okay. This, so why do you, you get killed by doing this? This could kill you. Why are you doing that? It's... Well, this is not going to be seen until oh, of our 15 fish. years after my So day. now I, that's why you have to sign the NDA and all these. Okay. That's right. All right. Well, that makes sense now. Okay, I understand that now. All right. It should be known, but I want there to be some kind of cushion for my family. Uh, 15 years seems like a good... You know, okay, all right. After my death, 15 years after my death. But Okay, so let's take a step back. You're making this tape out of an effect Neil had on you? I mean, Armstrong sort of influenced you? much. Um, sometimes it just takes a catalyst. I mean, you know, somewhere inside you, you know what's right. Right. I mean, I, I went for years just thinking I was doing the right thing, just just through my art. You know, and then something comes along that uh, you don't even recognize as a temptation because you're so swept away by your own ego. Uh, it took someone like Neil Armstrong and distance and time to hammer into me what this really meant about society, about myself, about the human condition even, which is what I'm about. Uh, so you must feel yes. very proud and very, very, very guilty and proud of this thing. I mean, yes, conflicted. I mean, I still think it's a terrible. Maybe it's a terrible thing to say. Maybe not. But I look at that or even think of it. I just remember it, and I think this was my fucking masterpiece. Yeah. I still think so. Right. I mean, it's the greatest. My <laughs> flaws. It's my goddamn masterpiece. It's better than two thousand one. It's better than Paths of Glory or. Or uh, Clockwork Orange, or Barry Lyndon, or Doctor Strangelove, and, and, all of which I love. But and, and, and you're include now that that's the moon landing itself, and that's, and what a triumphal story that is. Uh, were you involved in any of the other missions at all, or is that just the one? I mean, would they just take your thing, or did it was it a one off, or did you get did you do them all? I mean, you just did eleven and thirteen. They brought you back after twelve failed. Okay, just to just to do thirteen. That's it. Um, and Neil helped you with that. So, so was it just a one-off? I mean, you just did them. Did you do them all? Well, I did eleven and thirteen as well. You did thirteen, uh, okay. Not twelve. Why did why is thirteen they, a failure then? Why did you? Well, they brought me back. And why? But why did you make it? Twelve failed. You uh, twelve failed? How? You what do you mean? How did twelve fail? Tell me, twelve failed. How did it? I'm I'm asking you a character. How did 12 fail? 
Can we stop? Nobody watched it. No one cared. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so you did 11 and 13. But why, why 13? Why did you make 13 and do like a failure? Why did you? Because 12 was a disaster. I mean, we mean why cared anymore? Did it? 72. Uh, oh. By then, it was old hat almost. People just didn't care, and that's why they had to play golf up there. Okay, so I mean, as if golf was. Was the you know was watchable? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if they'd had a horse race, that would have been watchable. <laughs> That's true. But a, a golf match, I mean, a, a golf game on the moon. Right. Okay. So they weren't getting the ratings. That wasn't my idea. I, okay. I, I will not take credit for that. Okay. So so it was really a ratings issue that they paid twelve didn't pull the the ratings that eleven did. And so why did you come up with thirteen storyline? Like what, how'd that happen? <laughs>